I just want to briefly orient you to this class. Um, so let's first go through the course syllabus. So in this syllabus, you'll find uh, my office hours. Tentatively, they're set to 9 to 10 a.m. on Friday uh, Mountain Time. Um, but they are subject to change in the first week as things are a little bit dynamic. Um, and I'm w still figuring out what works best with scheduling and meetings and uh, committee work. Um, okay. So very important is email correspondence as this is an online class. Um, it's, my email is listed here. And when you email me, um, here's a brief template to help me help you a little bit better. Um, if you can send a screenshot of the question you're having trouble solving, that is extremely useful. Um, if you want to include a little bit of a written description as well, or what you tried as a solution, that is also useful. But definitely a screenshot or a picture of what you have a question about. Um, and in your subject line, put Math 1040, and please state your name somewhere in the body of the text or somewhere where I can see it. Um, one thing about email correspondence is that at various points I have highs and lows uh, for the emails. I aim to get back to you as quickly as possible, but during the high times it can take as much as two days for me to respond. And um, that's Monday through Friday, counting the work week. Uh, during the weekend, I'm spending my time with my family and not answering emails, so do not include weekends during that time. Okay. So the required textbook here is in bold. That is according to the math department. Um, if you should choose, and you're welcome to make your own decision, you're not required, you know, this is the required book by the math department, but if you should choose, you can use these alternatives or oftentimes students find the lecture notes provided in the online material sufficient um, for the course textbook. So if you should decide that that's sufficient for you, you don't need to buy the textbook. Um, and there's a few alternatives here. However, there are some uh, differences between these three books. So if you really want to stick with uh, what is in the required material, which is consistent with the lecture notes, um, you could you can buy the, the course textbook. Um, here's the prerequisite um, and here's your grading breakdown. There is a group project uh, which is part of a signature assignment in this class. It's required, and this class is also sustainable. So the group project is on sustainability. The homework for this course is 30% of your final grade. That equals to two of your exams. So you should definitely do your homework because it's worth the amount of two exams. Your final exam is comprehensive, and it is worth 25% of your final grade. Your exam dates are given here. Um, you should notice that you are allowed some flexibility in when you take your exam, um, and it's just listed here on Canvas. I'll go through that. Um, you have about a week to take your, your exam, you know, um, except for the final exam that is a little bit more scrunched down because uh, during the final exam weeks we're still finishing off that last week of material and the final exam dates are more condensed um, and then I have to get grades in. So your final exam has less flexibility. But your exam one and two, you know, this is not online class, a lot of you are working, you're allowed a little bit of flexibility in when you take your exams. Um, all exams are through Canvas. Um, you are strongly encouraged not to have late work. 
However, if you should need to turn in something late, you can. There is a late penalty of 5% per day, and that, that is capped eventually. So, um, But the sooner you get your late work in, the better. But please, please do not uh, turn in late work if you can avoid it. Okay. Um, cheating is not tolerated. Um, that will result in a failing grade. Um, if you should find yourself in an unfortunate circumstance, you may improve your exam on one percent on on one exam, and uh, you'll need to email me with more details here. And this email needs to be received well in advance before your final exam week. Otherwise, there's nothing I, that I can do for you. Um, you will need to access the New York Times depending on which group project you select. And it's free for students. You just need to sign up here. Um, I have a statement about core beliefs. Please read over it. I provide you a review for your first two exams, but not for the final exam. Um, this is a legacy. I'll remove it. I apologize for that. This is an online class, and this is also a sustainable class. So the online class means that almost all of your work is going to be done outside of class. This is a sustainable class, meaning the course is centered around sustainability, and your group project will relate to this. Uh, the sustainab sustainability learning outcomes will be that students will be able to comprehend the interconnection between environmental, social, economic systems in relation to sustainability, and that have far-reaching consequences that impact more than one discipline. Interpret statistical analysis to answer statistical questions appropriately considering the scope of inference and the weight of the evidence. Um, and this will all be centered on sustainability. Um, mostly sustainability, or a large chunk of it, relates to the signature assignment. Um, you will be required to write for it. And you're trying to answer a big question, which is to what extent is statistic able to make conclusions on issues relating to sustainability? And what do these decisions mean for sustainability? Um, so please read over that. Um, finally, your grade breakdown is outlined here. Um, and lastly, I expect you to act professionally. Okay. So let's go back to the Canvas homepage. And one of the things you will be asking yourself is what do you need to do each week? Well, it's outlined in these modules. Each week, you'll have roughly one quiz. So here in week one, you have two quizzes. You have a syllabus quiz. You have a data collection quiz. In week two, you just have this quiz on summarizing and understanding data. This syllabus quiz is on what we just went over. So let's preview it. You should have your syllabus in hand. And you need to answer these questions. Notice this says select all answers that apply. So this is just on contacting me. Um, so, you know, I'm asking you uh, what you should include when you email me. Maybe you should email your course name, Math 1040 in the subject line, you know. And I'm not going to select all of these for you, but for instance, that is one I hope you would select. You know, maybe what you try is a possible solution, and there's others that you, you might want to select. For question two, this is again select all applies. Um, how long, you know, one of the questions, the response will generally take one to two weeks. You know, click that if it's true. Don't click it if it's false, etc. So you'll need to go through and weigh each of these questions. Um, and then I ask you about exams, what you, the name of your instructor is, um, and about technology. Okay, so there's six questions in total. You'll need to read through each possible response, select 
it if it is true or if it applies. Okay. So those are the questions for the syllabus quiz. Let's go back. Um, so you have qu a quiz on material, material that you're expected to learn. So this is on data collection. I have slides on data collection. That's a PowerPoint. You can download those here. Or if you prefer to watch a video, you can watch a video of me going over the slides and discussing it as a lecture there. You can read the textbooks. Uh, the required textbook would correspond to these sections. The suggested textbooks roughly to these sections, although they're not a perfect correspondence because they're suggested and free. Uh, then some uh, extra material that you can read over. And if we go through this quiz, you know, you have access to all these things. Um, notice that you're allowed two attempts and your average score is recorded. Okay. Um, so question one here says that the newspaper reports that higher rates of drowning and ice cream consumption correspond. Does this mean that eating ice cream can put you at risk of drowning? What might be the reason behind the phenomena? Then you have to select the best answer. Okay. Um, here it's asking you to fill in the blank here, um, and you select, select the appropriate missing statement. Um, here it's about sampling. How do you sample data? Um, other questions here. This is on a data set, and here in this question, for instance, is different than the others. You're asked to select all questions that apply. One thing that I should note is that if you select a wrong question, one wrong question, one right answer um, in this question seven, the wrong question is worth negative points if you select it. So only select answers that are true. Okay, And you select one that is true when in fact it's false. The system in Canvas is set up so that it counts as negative points. Okay. Um, here's another question. You're asked to select all that apply. Um, here's another data set. You're asked to respond all that apply. So that's in week one. Let's go back. Um, so in week two, you also have another quiz. In week three, you have a single quiz. In week four, you have two quizzes. One of them is just on selecting your signature assignment or project, and then you have a normal quiz. Um, let's go to week two just so you know what it looks like. And just, you know, FYI, when you click on this quiz, it tells you all about it. So again, just you have your PowerPoint slides, you have the corresponding video lecture, you have the sections that you can read in your textbook. Um, and there's information here. So it tells you the points. It tells you that there's no time limit when you're taking this quiz. It tells you that you have multiple attempts and the attempts are two and it keeps your average score. This is not always the same for every single quiz so you're expected to read through it. Um, but all the information about your quiz is listed here. Um, generally, they're similar, but not all of them are the same. Okay, and certainly the points are different. If we preview this, this works a lot like the previous quiz. It's on the material, you know, and the material here is your sources for material: slides, lecture, uh, textbook. Okay. Here, you're asked to calculate the mean or average of this data set okay, and select the right answer. Here you're asked to calculate the standard deviation and so you know this is just a true false question. You're, this question works a lot like the previous ones and if we get back to the end here's some graphs. There is a select all answers that apply and you're to select, read through each of these responses and select it if it's true based on the graph. Okay. Um, again, another select all, and then question nine is select all. So there will be varying styles of questions that you're expected to answer. So that's what you're expected to do on a weekly basis. Eventually, when you're going through this, you will have an exam. 
Um, so let's look at week six. Week six, you have an exam. You click on this. Um, notice you are allowed a single attempt. There's a time limit, so all this information is provided here. You have a, a date range for which you can take this exam from February 11th to February 20th. Um, and so this is your exam one. I'm not going to preview it because that's, you know, classified information. And, you know, this is just a little bit about it. If we go back, you should notice, hey, look, there's a review that corresponds to the exam. This review does not always correlate with your exam score because if you look at this, there's no time limit. You're allowed indefinite attempts, unlimited, and it keeps your highest score. So if you want to treat this like an exam, you might consider giving yourself a time limit or applying other things. Um, for some people, this review helps a lot and correlates well. For others, it does not. Um, so just keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, part of it is also how you treat the review. Um, if you preview this, you know, it asks you to calculate a probability here. It asks you about sa uh, sampling design and experimental design. Um, here it asks you more about possible confounds or bias from a study. Uh, what types of data you're dealing with. It asks you to calculate the mean of this data set. It asks you to use the uh, empirical rule here. So various different questions. I don't want to give them all away. And this is to help you prep for your exam. Now, there is a second exam. And uh, here's the second exam in week 13. You have a review. You have an exam. You can click on those to look them over. Um, uh, then you also have a draft of your uh, final project. Um, I should note that, you know, you have a draft of the introduction of your final project in week eight. You also have to select it, which final project you're going to do in week four. Um, in week 15, things are a little tight because week 16 is the final exam. You have a final project you turn in and you also take your final exam. Now, you need to complete all three of these items in week 15. So that's going to be a busy week. Um, I This quiz is to help you turn in your statistical analysis draft no matter which um, no matter which project you're turning in. So you have to complete both of these. Um, I will say I think the Salt Lake City temperature analysis prep is a uh, Salt Lake City temperature analysis project is a little bit easier and I'll go into why. Um, I just want to briefly talk about the statistical analysis draft. So one of them is on Salt Lake City temperatures. The other is a real data set on a pay disparity between men and women at a single bank location at a small bank during uh, the time periods 1965 to 1975. And you're to compare starting salaries. We have other uh, information such as education experience um, and other data like that to try and model it to determine if those could, uh, how those contribute to um, starting salary. Um, for this assignment, there it is much less structured, and that's why I think that this is the harder project. By the way, here's a data set, here's a data analysis going out for it, and here's the output that you need to answer the questions. Um, in this statistical analysis draft. 
So here, you know, please note, you expect to put the analysis in your own word. You're allowed to copy and paste where appropriate, but it needs to be in your own words and you need to explain the meaning. So here I provide box plots, I provide demographic information, I provide a, a two sample t-test for you and you need to interpret that and put it in your own words. I provide a regression output, I provide another regression output um, here. Okay, So the analysis is mostly provided but the outline is, you know, you need to fill in the blanks. Um, so there's a lot, a lot to be filled in here. And you need to answer all of these questions here. Okay. It's a less structured than the temperature project. Um, however, you're welcome to choose whichever one you like. And by the way, if you want the original source data, it's here. But a lot of students prefer working with the output that I provide which is here. For the Salt Lake City temperature analysis, here's the source data if you want to investigate it yourself, but you can just download and complete this template or you can use the template to put it in your own words if you like. And the template has everything kind of outlined for you. And we'll wait for it to load. So I provide you instructions. Um, here I provide you the graph, and I asked you just to respond to these questions here. Um, and that's what you need to do, is you need to understand this output and answer and respond to these questions. Okay. Um, so you need to do that and submit this as a written document. Now going back to the Canvas quizzes, these Canvas quizzes are to help you interpret the analysis. So I clicked on this Salt Lake City temperature analysis prep. It's required whichever project you choose. You have to do both because Canvas doesn't have functionality to let you select. Um, so here, you know, here's some of the output and you're asked these multiple choice questions and you're to select all that are true to help you prep for your project. Here's a regression output. You're to select all that are true. There's a lot of questions there, so it's worth more points, um, etc. So these questions are to help you with the analysis. Now, finally, um, you have your final exam. Just like your other exams, you'll take it here. Um, your final exam is worth 150 points, and you know. It's available on a, April 22nd. It's due April 26th. So you still have a window, but a shorter window because, you know, that's the end of the semester and there's limited time. In terms of your final project, you had only seen the... Um, the statistical analysis. If you want the full template, you must click here and you would complete that. For the pay disparity project, these are the full set of questions that you have to answer. So this entire thing. So you have an introduction, implications, a statistical analysis, a discussion, a conclusion section that you have to answer. And for both these projects, um, you're not to include your personal opinion except in the last paragraph, and you're allowed one paragraph. Um, this is just reporting what you find and reporting on the data analysis, um, not asking for anyone's personal opinion. Um, for this project, especially the Salt Lake City temperature project, um, you will find a free student subscription to the New York Times will be useful. Um, in the Salt Lake City Temperature Project, you'll be expected to reference one or two New York Times articles um, and expected to report on those articles. Okay. Now, I just want to say it's a pleasure to have you in Math 1040. I'm excited for what you're about to learn, and I'm excited to be your instructor. Thank you very much.